yourself in the position that where Jesus was and see the things that people have done and said to him, and we realize that we are his servants. Mm -hmm. And he said that the servant isn't greater than the master. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to have to go through those things. Mm -hmm. And I love how the scripture tells us that he thirsted because it let us know that Jesus, though he was God, he still was here wrapped in flesh, and he still had the feelings and the affirmities like we have down here today. Amen? Amen. And the Bible says this, that if you would hunger and thirst after righteousness, that you shall be filled. Amen. 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 The next one coming up is <coughs> Minister Roman Ross. Come on, give him a hand. Right. Mr. Roman was licensed on the 30th of March. We thank God for him being a faithful uh, drummer, musician. He's faithful as far as being the assistant associate children's church pastor. And he's a great young man. He's also getting ready to put on Coupon King, amen, <laughs> along with the rest of his resume. Amen. Right. We thank God for him. Minister Roman. All right. My verse is John 19.30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Now, when he asked, when he stated that it is finished, what he was referring, wasn't, but what he was referring to, what does he mean? He talks about, is, it, is he talking about his life, the suffering he's going through, or maybe the fulfillment of prophecy? What do these powerful words portray? Well, to get that answer, then I have been going to go first in Genesis that said that Genesis then God created man and woman in his own image. Mm -hmm. And also tells how sin entered the world. Now in Romans then it says because of Adam's sin, death entered the world. Mm -hmm. And also states all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So because of Adam's sin, we have acknowledged of, we have the knowledge of good and evil. However, at some point, we all chose to disobey God. It is not that we were punished for Adam's sin, but that God, that Adam's sin caused there to be punishment for sin, Amen. which we all do. Mm. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, Surely the arm of God is not too short to save, nor is the ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have been hidden, hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. What we get from that verse is sin separates us from God. But God did not, because of this sin, what's God's reaction? <laughs> he didn't decide to destroy us or discard us. He chose to save us at a great cost. Mm. In fact, he decided that before the world was created. Mm -hmm. yes. In 1 Peter 1, 18-21, it <coughs> states that Jesus was chosen and sacrificed for the creation. Mm -hmm. And it was prophesied in Genesis, Galatians, and Isaiah, and more places. In Genesis, speaking to the serpent, God said that the child of the woman would crush his head while mm -hmm. he bruised his heel. Mm -hmm. And also in Genesis, God promised Abraham that he that he would bless all nations through a descendant of his. Mm -hmm. In Galatians, he says that to Abraham was an announcement of the gospel of, and is speaking of Christ saving the Gentiles. In Isaiah, then, it just shows a detailed prophecy of the suffering of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, this is later proven in Matthew, Acts, and John. In Matthew, then, it starts with the <coughs> You know, genealogy. genealogy, connecting Jesus to Abraham. Mm -hmm. In Acts, then it says Jesus was accredited and proven to be from God because of his miracles, wonders, and signs. In John, then it says that his heart was troubled as, as the time years for him to offer himself as a sacrifice. But it was for this very hour that he came. Mm -hmm. yeah. In John 19.30, it says, when Jesus' statement that it is finished is not a cry of the feet of a dying man, but a statement of triumph and completion. All right. Yes. Salvation that had been planned since before creation, promised and prophesied through time was completed. The price was paid, starting something new, a new covenant which was which 
man is not separated from God, and we live with him in heaven. All right. Yeah. 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 Let us say amen. amen. It's, it, it always amazes me at the thought, the forethought of God and the planning that God had from the beginning. He had already made a plan for our salvation. So it is not a surprise that they would crucify him. Jesus came fully aware that I have come here with a mission. Right. I've come here with a job to do. And he kept that at the forefront of all that happened, even in the midst of all of his relationships. Uh, someone, Brother Jeff, made mention that his relationship with his mother he kept it kind of distant because I don't want to get too uh, lovey-dovey with you because I've got to stay focused on what I came to do. And you have to stay focused so that they don't take you with me. <laughs> you know, my I'm supposed to die. The lamb is supposed to die, not Mary. Amen? And so, so he kept that in the forefront of all that he did. He kept his focus that... Uh, and he kept forefront, the, the, in the forefront of his mind that uh, this has been foretold, this has been told, it's been uh, uh, predicted, the way has been laid out, the shadow has been cast, and now I've got to walk in <coughs> that shadow and cause it to become a reality. And so Jesus was fully aware of what he was sent here to do. He was, uh, he was on a mission, y'all. And I'm glad that he completed his mission well. <laughs>